I want you to open your mouth. You know, in the days when we used to go to the club, I remember my clubbing days. You know, when we walked in and we made the grand entrance and we didn't sit still. We danced and we danced and we danced and we danced for the devil. But now I'm asking you, let us praise our God together. Open that mouth of yours. And greater than opening your mouth, I want you to open your heart because our God is a God who sees the heart. He sees not as men do, but he sees the heart of men. So I want you to open your mouth, open your heart, and let us praise our God. Indeed, 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 he has been good. 
he has been kind. He continues to be good and he's always kind. Every praise, every praise, every praise belongs to our God. Good evening, Radio Land. This is Jen Harvey from The Bible Says International Ministries. It is a ministry where we declare the whole counsel of God. Welcome everyone to the Hour of Power. And this evening, it is going to be a teaching from the teacher's heart, something that the Lord himself has given me from the throne room of grace. It is not theological theologically in depth. It is not going to be over your head. It is going to be simple, but it's simply the truth. It is simply what is needed in this day, in this hour. Let us just usher the presence of the living God and let us usher in his presence. Ask him for his power so we will be enabled to do what we ought to do in this hour. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, because you are a good God. We thank you because you are a kind King. We thank you because there is none like you, Jehovah. We thank you because we remain in the land of the living just because you have decreed it and you have declared it. Father, Lord God, we thank you because none can overrule your declaration. We thank you because none can undo your decisions. We thank you, Lord God, because what you have said it is done. Father, Lord God, as we are about to break the bread of life, we pray and ask for the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, or paraclete, or counselor, or mediator, or mentor, or teacher, or guide. We ask that the Holy Spirit be with us. Spirit of the living God, we're asking you to illuminate our minds. We're asking you to till the soils of our heart, make it fertile ground, that it will receive these seeds, these seeds of truth. Water them, Holy Spirit, that they will go deep into the soils of our heart. And they will bring forth a harvest, some yielding fruits 30, 60, even unto a hundredfold. We come against everything that want to hinder your word from having free course. And we bind and we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, we come against the spirit of weariness. We come against the spirit of distraction. We come against the spirit of worry. And we bind their powers. We render them ineffective and harmless over your people. We release the spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost. For the Bible lets us know whatsoever we bind here on earth. You yourself will bind it in heaven. And whatsoever we loose here on earth. You have loosed it in heaven. Holy Spirit have your way. And do what only you can do. And we will be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty precious name we pray. And all God's people say. And all God's people say. And all God's people say. Amen. I am extremely excited to let you know. That registration begins. For the second annual Women's Brunch Symposium. It is going to be held October 14th. 2017 from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. Our keynote speaker is none other than the mighty woman of God, Bishop Jacqueline McCullough, an internationally renowned evangelist, one that has been tarrying before the Lord, a woman who declares, Thus saith the Lord, a woman who speaks the truth, even though it has been used many a time against her. A woman who will say yea when the Lord says yea and she will say nay when the Lord says nay. Come join us at Dyke Beach Golf Course on this October 14th, 2017 from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. It's going to be an awesome time of worship, fellowship and of course we have a awesome meal prepared for you. Registration is $25 and that is it. Once you have registered, 
everything else has been paid for by the Lord himself. We are going to be dining in the Grand Ballroom at Dyker Beach Golf Course. I want you to come out. The Holy Spirit wants you to be there. God the Father and God the Son has ordered your steps to be there. I am telling you, come out. Come out to be refreshed. Come out to be revived. Come out to hear a word from the throne room of grace. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. It says, how can they believe when they have not heard? And how can they hear when a preacher has not been sent? But a preacher has been sent in the form of, in the person of uh, Bishop Jacqueline McCullough, and she is going to lend a word uh, that will bless your very existence. Uh, we're going to be praying. Uh, we're going to go into the spirit realm. Uh, we're going to take back what the enemy has stolen from us. Uh, we're going to tie, we're going to untie what the enemy as tied up. We are going to untie it. all the decree and all the declaration that the enemy has made against your life. Every decree of delay, every decree of denial, every decree of death, every decree of depression, every decree of unbelief, doubt. We are going to undo it in the mighty name of Jesus. For the Bible has given us power, power to declare and to decree and the Lord himself will establish it. Listen gentlemen, this the feature will be for women but we're inviting men to come forth. Come forth and support your daughters. Come forth and support your wives. Come forth and support your sisters, your nieces, your aunties. Come and support your cousins. We are going to be in a place where we know that the spirit of the Lord is going to be because he ordered he ordered this gathering himself he has prepared the venue he has prepared the word he has prepared the fellowship he has prepared the feast he has prepared the musical rendition the ministry of music and everything else that is on the program I'm inviting you to tell others when you hear for good thing you talk about it when you hear for good thing you share it you quickly get on the phone you quickly send an email you get on social media these are the things that these outlets can do for the body of Christ. They can and should be used positively to enrich your life and to enrich the lives of others. So I'm asking you, you spend time, more time on social media than you should. Doing many things that are destructive. Doing many things that have brought you and placed you in the situation where you are today. But Jen Harvey is telling you that your day of deliverance, God has pulled your file he has pulled your number and he's telling you show up show up up October 14th because his Holy Spirit will be there to break chains, to break shackles off both your feet, your mind and your will. He's going to help you to change those thoughts that are not right because you see the Bible lets us know that the mind is the battleground and whatsoever we sow we shall surely reap. Many of us our lives are the way it, where it is because of our thought life. You can sow a thought and that thought thought uh, can land you to your destiny but we're going to teach you how to undo it uh, we're going to teach you because the bible says uh, those who minds are stayed on christ uh, will be kept in perfect peace uh, the bible says study to show thyself approved of god uh, a workman that need not be ashamed uh, rightly dividing the word of truth uh, today i have a brief word for you and the word the title of my word today even before i get into it uh, it resonates uh, with the conference to be held on October 14th, 2017. My word for today is uh, 
you must leave so you can cleave you have to leave so you can cleave the bible lets us know that we can't serve two masters either we're going to love the one and hate the other you cannot stay in the dung hill of life and experience the glory of god impossible 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 says the servant of the living god but today 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 we are starting it first with the teaching and go lead it up to the symposium you must leave my sister you must leave my sister you must leave so you can cleave if there is a brother on the line and you're under the sound of my voice the lord has sent his servant jen harvey to let you know that you must leave in order for you to cleave you cannot straddle on both sides of the fence it doesn't work like that either you're walking with darkness or you are in light but you can't be in two places at the same time let me tell you for those who are walking in darkness there's a place there's a place that was prepared for satan and all his demons god did not make hell for the human race but he set up some principles some ways and some decisions that we have to make and if we think we know more than god then in hell we shall lift up our eyes but that is not his desire he says i wish that none should perish but that all should come to repentance i am one that love to uplift god has given me the grace he has given me the heart to love people he has ex especially given me a grace uh, to love my sisters uh, to want to see them lifted up uh, to want to see them healed uh, to want to see them whole uh, but i can't just tell you the good part of salvation uh, i can't just tell you the good part of the the gospel of jesus christ uh, i have to declare the whole counsel and if you walk away from god uh, if you if you refuse to repent uh, and the word repent means to turn from uh, if you refuse to turn from your sins uh, then and hell shall be your portion but if you bend your heart this afternoon and say Jesus 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 I need you then automatically you are translated from the kingdom of Satan which is the kingdom of darkness and you will be translated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ who is the dear son of God the Father I'm telling you mark your calendars mark your calendars October 14th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. oh what a glorious day it will be as we fellowship as we worship as we receive the word as the holy spirit will be in the grand ballroom come 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 i'm asking you to come with faith i'm asking you to come with an expectation those are the two primary things that you need to come with come with faith and come with expectation knowing that our god is not a man that he should lie neither is he the son of man that he ought to change his mind has he not spoken and shall he not make it good he will certainly he will certainly take the shackles off you he will certainly move remove the spiritual blindfold that has been placed over your eyes he will unplug your ears by removing spiritual earplugs he will settle the devil's dust in the mighty name of jesus the holy spirit is coming to envelop you in his bosom he's coming to saturate you in his fire he's coming to saturate you in the blood of jesus he's coming to make a mark around you and i know I know, I know, I know, I know that when the angel of destruction, when he sees the blood, he must pass over in the mighty name of Jesus. When he sees the bloodline, Satan knows he cannot cross the bloodline in the mighty name of Jesus. Will you not come out October 14th, 2017, Dyker Beach Golf Course, registration $25, full luncheon, dining experience your fellowship the word or keynote speaker bishop jacqueline mccullough 
come and hear a word from the throne room of grace uh, as she ministers into the lives of each and every woman uh, as she lays hands upon you as she prays for you uh, the host Jen Harvey will be there God has risen me up uh, I will surround you in prayers uh, oh I will encourage your soul uh, God has given me the grace uh, I can encourage oh God has given me the grace to encourage people come out come out you have got to get to the place uh, where you say enough is enough uh, you have got to get to the place uh, where you says today's the day uh, that I am leaving uh, I am leaving the world uh, I am leaving darkness uh, I am leaving the devil's camp uh, so I can cleave to Jesus Christ uh, so I can cleave to his Holy Spirit uh, so I can cleave to the people of God uh, today is the day the Lord has sent me to tell you you've got to leave uh, so you can cleave uh, you cannot serve two men Masters, at the same time, all through scriptures, we see where God has called people apart. I know we are living in a society where people are lonely. They are more lonely than ever. We have more technology than we have ever had. We have more gadgets than we have ever had. But there is a loneliness and it drives people especially those in the church uh, and they're cleaving to the things of the world uh, what is a bible believing christian uh, doing in a bar what is a bible believing christian uh, doing at happy hour happy hour is in the house of the lord uh, happy hour is in your own house worshiping god and serving god uh, happy hour is in your mind uh, happy hour is doing the will of god uh, what are you doing uh, and so because you're lonely and because there's not much fellowship uh, this is an area that is so lacking in the church. I am here to tell you that our life is not about Sunday teaching. And it's not about Wednesday Bible studies. And it's not about Friday prayer meeting. But our life is holistic. Seven days, 24 hours of the week uh, we are to do things uh, get involved in things uh, that will lift us up uh, and that will lift up the name of Jesus uh, and so many Christians have gone out into the world uh, and they're in happy hour they're in the bar they're doing things uh, many are so lonely especially in the area of relationship uh, that they have gone out to use their eyes uh, their eyes to find a mate all uh, oh, men have looked on women uh, and they have sized them up by the size of their breast and the width of their hips uh, and women have looked at men uh, and they have sized them up by their height uh, the car they drive uh, and their financial portfolio but hear this from Jen Harvey if that is your guide if that is your marker if those are the systems that you use uh, I'm telling you perilous times await you because the Bible lets us know that the heart of men uh, is desperately wicked above anything uh, who can know it save the king of king uh, you better get into the word of god you better get down on your knees uh, and ask god uh, to find you a mate god knows that fellowship is important he's the one who engineered it uh, it began in the book of beginnings uh, the bible let us know that god would walk into the garden of eden in the cool of the day and he had communion with adam he fellowshiped with adam but we know that god is a spirit uh, for the bible says that god is a spirit uh, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth uh, so even though he and adam had communion he knew that adam needed something he could touch uh, Adam needed something you can see and then he created Eve I want you to hear what he did he created Eve he created Eve for Adam there was there's a specific person that God has created just for you do not go out and try to find a person for yourself I want you to know that Adam was resting he was resting in the will of God when God brought Eve to him so because the person is on the praise team and because the person is called an evangelist and because the person is a deacon or a deaconess and the person is a Christian yes you've got that part right can two walk the Bible says in the book of Amos Amos 3 verses 3 can two walk if they be not agreed 
So the person must be a Christian. But because the person is a Christian, because he is a Christian, because she is a Christian, it doesn't mean that individual is for you. Eve was specifically designed. She was specifically created. She was specifically created for Adam. A helpmeet suitable for him. The Lord wants you to know that you've got to leave in order to cleave. The book of Proverbs 22 verses 24 through 25 tells us some of the things, give us a scenario. It says, do not go, and I'm paraphrasing, it says, do not go in the way of an angry man. Least he will teach you and he in, this, in these verses doesn't mean male. They're gender neutral. Un unless he will teach you his ways. That is anger. And it becomes a snare to your soul. So right through scriptures, we can see the Bible in scriptures. We can see God warning us which way we should go, which way we should not go, which way we should take, which path we should take, uh, which path we ought not to take. Uh, we see it also. It was a father and a son. And I'm talking about none other than Jonathan and Saul. But the Bible lets us know in the book of 1 Samuel 18 verses 3. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as he loved his own soul. Jonathan loved David so much. He loved the welfare of David. He knew that his father was envious of David. And even though he physically remained with his father Saul, he left him with his heart and his heart claved onto David. God is going to put some things in your heart and God is going to put some people in your heart that you must cleave to. And God is going to show you some people, some places and some things that you've got to leave so he can get you to the place where he needs to get you. We are going to look at a quick example and our example is going to be none other than the story of Ruth and Naomi. So we're going to look at the the story of Ruth and Naomi and I'm just going to paraphrase quickly if you're churched you will know this story if you're not get into the book of Ruth Ruth chapter 1 and it is a very very short book it's not a lengthy book and so you can take your time and read it now Ruth originally was from Bethlehem Judea but there was a famine in the land at that time. And she and her husband and two sons left and they went to Moab. During their stay in Moab, Ruth lost her sons, both sons, and she lost her husband. But while they were there, the two sons took for themselves wives, Moabites, Moabites. and so one of the wife was called Ruth. The other was called Orpha, Orpa, O-R-P-A-H, Orpa. And the other was Ruth. And so when both of their husbands died and Naomi's husband also died, she received word from Bethlehem, Judea, that God had visited his people with bread. In short, it meant that the famine was over. And so she gathered with her, her two daughter-in-laws, and they started on a journey. But as they started, she said to them, and look at the selflessness of this woman. She told them to go back, to return. She told them to go back and return to their mothers. She says, go back and return to you, the, your mothers. And both wept. Orpah wept and Ruth wept and said they would not. But when she continued to press them, Orpah wept, but she left. She made a decision and she went back. Now, Ruth was still left with Naomi. And we know in verse 16, and she said, which is Naomi speaking to Ruth. 
And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth answered her in verse 16. And I know verse 16 since I was a little girl. It says, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Now, in order for Ruth to make such a profound statement, she had to have seen Naomi lived a life in front of her that was impressive. Naomi had to have lived a life in front of her that was impressive. Impressive because she was in Moab. She's a Moabitess. She does not originally and initially serve the God of the Israelites, Jehovah. And so during their tenure in Moab, she saw a lifestyle both in Naomi and her, maybe the two sons and the husband that caused her to make a decision that your God is going to be my God and your people my people. So what does it take for you to leave and for you to cleave? First, in order for you to leave and cleave, you've got to make a decision. You have got to make a decision that enough is enough. I have had enough of the drugs. I have enough I have had enough of the alcohol. I have had enough of the sicknesses and diseases. I have had not enough of the pity parties. I have had enough poverty. I have had enough of just everything that is not good. I have partied enough. I have smoked enough. I have gossiped enough. I have clubbed enough. You have got to decide. It is a decision that has to be made. And every day that you fail to make the decision to leave, you have made the decision to cleave to that thing that holds you hostage. So you have got to make a decision and your decision has to be made today because you don't know when God is going to call your number. And my father in the Lord taught me this. Bishop Olu Itiola from Nigeria, Africa. He taught me, he says, Jenny, whatever death finds in your hands, that is what you will be judged with. So your righteousness of 10 years will not save you if you died in your sins. Your righteousness and your good acts of 30 days ago will not save you if you died in your sins. It is whatever death finds in your hands that is what determines where you go. Tomorrow is owed to none. Today is the day of salvation. It, it is the day that God has appointed to break you free. The Bible says whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And so Ruth made a decision. I want you to hear what Naomi said to Ruth in verse 15. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. This is why it didn't take much. This is why it didn't take much goading and it didn't take much influence or pressure for Orpah to return because her heart was still knitted her heart was still knitted to her people and her heart was still knitted to her gods. You will not be able to leave if your heart is still knitted. If your heart is still knitted to the things that have held you captive, to the things that are holding you hostage, to the things that are holding you a prisoner, you will not be able to leave so you can cleave and I am going to tell you this 
Many people who do drugs, many people who are drinking alcohol, many people who are smoking, many people who are involved in all kinds of destructive relationships and destructive behaviors, in the depths of their hearts, they don't want to do it. But there is a power there is a source that is behind it that they cannot see and they do not have the wherewithal to fight. There is a power that they can't break free from and it is going to take the power of the Holy Spirit. It is going to take the name of Jesus. It is going to take the blood of Jesus to break those yokes, to remove whatever has gotten their minds. Because you see, that's where the battleground is. It is the mind. And so Orpah was still tied in her land to her people and to her God. But listen to Ruth's reply to Naomi entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for whither thou goest I will go and whither thou lodgest I will lodge thy people shall be my people and thy God my God so she made a decision she made a determination that she is not going to leave Naomi and I don't altogether blame Orpah for leaving because it was divinely determined and orchestrated for Ruth to go with Naomi. And let me tell you something. God is not a respecter of a person. He took this Moabitess woman and he thrusted her into the genealogy of Jesus Christ. You, if you make a decision for Jesus to leave the world, to leave your sins, to leave the pleasure of sins, to leave your dark place, to leave your place of drought, and to follow Jesus, I guarantee you, and I will tell you unapologetically, that that is the best decision you could ever make, and that your life is going to be blessed. Let me tell you something about the God we serve. When he blesses you, he blesses you pressed with full measure, pressed down, shake it together, and running over. So when he blesses you, he blesses you so much that it spills over into the lives of others. Ruth made that decision. She made that decision because she had seen Naomi lived for her God, which is Jehovah, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. Equal in power, purpose, and personality. So we don't have confusion in Christianity. They're in one accord. And she, Ruth says, I am not leaving. Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from falling after thee. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. God has a place assigned for you and he has a person assigned to get you there. I'm going to repeat that. God has a place assigned for you, and he has assigned a person to get you there. But you've got to leave where you are. You've got to leave it by faith. You've got to call upon the name of Jesus. Your next place, hear me carefully, your next place you neither have the power, the wherewithal, the knowledge to get yourself there. You don't. Let me break it down and use examples that are in our everyday life. You decide that you want to be a nurse. You are now a nurse's aide. And you have made that decision to be a nurse. You want to be a registered nurse. To get to that end, you need 
is a process and you need people. Where you are now as a nurse's aide, you don't have the wherewithal, you don't have the power, you don't have the knowledge to get yourself there. So it is in the physical realm, it is also in the spirit realm. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Many of us want to go and hurry and rush to do things that we are not prepared to do. And so calamity becomes our portion. The place that God has assigned for you, he has assigned a person to get you there. Because you on your own, by your own will, by your own devices, cannot get yourself there. You need to be taught. You need to be coached. You need to be directed. You need to be mentored. Who else is blind but my servants? And so we see here that Ruth, one, she made a decision. Number two, she claved to the person whom God has assigned and appointed. How do I know who to cleave to? This person must be a fruit-producing person. You cannot, and I'm going to repeat this, you cannot ask a man who is living on the street, who is homeless, who is begging for food, you cannot go to that man to give you instructions on creating wealth. Whomever God has assigned to you to get you to the next place must be a fruit-producing person. When we look at the body of Christ, do not be taken by anyone's title. Do not be taken by their attire, their raiment. You know, in, in Christianity, we have some garments, some regal regalia that we see certain personalities wear. And there's nothing wrong with it. But don't be taken by that. Don't be taken at how well they preach or teach. Don't be taken that they're prayer warriors. Don't be taken by any of that. Because the gift of God is without repentance. Look for fruits, fruits that remain. You must see the fruit of the Spirit in these people's life. They must radiate love, kindness, gentleness. You can't see somebody gossiping. You can't see someone living in sin, not married, but she got this man and that man, and you're going to cleave to that person. No. You must look for fruit. The fruit of the Spirit must be evident in their lives. Do not be taken by their grand and their loquaciousness, how well they speak and they're always just going at it. Ruth decided based on how she saw Naomi lived that she wanted Naomi's God to always be her God. If the Bible tells you do not go in the way of an angry man least you learn his ways and it becomes a snare to your soul. What it means is your environment, do not miss this principle. Your environment will quicker change you than you can change your environment. I'm going to repeat that. Your environment will quicker change you than you can change your environment. So don't go there thinking, oh, I have the power. And I know women do this a lot. And men probably do it too. They do. You see a woman that you like and you think, oh, she's not a Christian, but I can change her. And me and women see a man, oh, I like him. I'm going to marry him. And then I'm going to ask, uh, he's going to change. He's going to come to church. No, you are ensnaring yourself. You are about to be encumbered and entangled in a fight of your life. 
you cannot walk with another unless they be agreed. You do not have the power to change another person. If you had power to change people, you would first change yourself. Christians, listen to me. Do not go into the bars, the social gatherings, the social lounges. Don't go into a happy hour. When they're through with you, they would have sucked the grace of happiness out of your life. And you would have fallen from grace. And when Satan comes into a house that was swept, but is empty, He's going to go out and he's going to find a demon seven times, seven more vicious than himself. So when Christians get into the place where they have backslidden or when the enemy is ready to wreak havoc on their lives, it will take only the power of the almighty God to deliver them because he's going to lay thick on them because he knows God is going to come back for them. So he's going to wreak as much havoc in an attempt to destroy them but God forbid leave what you're caught in leave the drugs leave Facebook leave all forms of social media that you just gossip and waste your hours your days and your life I see some things that Christian post on Facebook and all over and I'm like what are they thinking this is because many of them don't have a mentor they don't have a guide they don't have someone that they can share it with and the person says you've got to be out of your mind that is not who your representative you are a representative of Jesus Christ you cannot say that you cannot go there you cannot do that you cannot post that picture Leave where you are. Leave where you are so you can cleave. You can cleave to what God has for you. I'm here to tell you that whatever you have attached yourself to, that man, that woman, that needle, those needles, that drug, that crack, that cocaine, that heroin, whatever it is, those bottles, the TV, Wasting your years. Wasting your years. You don't even know John 3 verses 16. But you know all the shows that are coming on. You know the names. You know all the songs on the radio. But you can't say the Lord's Prayer. And then you wonder why your life is the way it is. I'm here to tell you that you ought to leave what you have attached yourself to. Ask the power of the Holy Ghost to come into your life. And we're going to pray now. We're going to pray and ask God that he will step foot in our situation. And he will break what needs to be broken. He will uproot what needs to be uprooted. And he will transform us. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we worship you. Father Lord God, you says we shall know the truth and it is the truth that we know that will make us free. Father God, as I have spoken to your people and I've instructed them that where they are in darkness, where they're sitting in the dung ill of life, it is not what you have apportioned for them, but that they need to leave where they are. They need to make a decision that they need to leave so the Holy Spirit can step in and operate root them O oh God from their situation of death disaster demise destruction delay in the name of Jesus so Holy Spirit I'm asking you that you will go to them right now everyone under the sound of my voice whatever they are caught in whatever they are trapped in in the mighty name of Jesus I'm asking you Holy Spirit to speak to them Holy Spirit I'm asking you oh God to touch them let them know that you have not carried them this far to leave them and that it is time that they leave they leave they leave they leave they leave out of the death trap of life 
Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to go after them. Uh, Spirit of the living God, I'm asking you to bring them home as you did the prodigal son. Uh, Spirit of the living God, I'm asking you to wash them. Uh, I'm asking you to purge their hearts. Uh, I'm asking you to dip his up in the blood of Jesus uh, and sanitize them in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Spirit of the living God, I'm asking you to take coals off the altar of God uh, and that you would purge their hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, oh, God. Uh, oh, God. Uh, their minds. Uh, I remove every chain off their minds. Uh, I remove everything that has shackled their minds in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I remove, oh, God, every power of darkness, uh, every decree and every declaration uh, that the spirit and of darkness have made over their lives uh, that they will not be they will not have uh, they will not become what God has ordered them to be uh, I command oh God uh, that those decree and those declaration uh, if I be a servant of the living God uh, I pull it out of the spirit realm uh, I pull it out of the spirit realm in the name of Jesus uh, and I trample it on the foot uh, oh father every altar that has been risen up against them and every sacrifice that lays upon the altar that has kept them bound that has kept them in an evil covenant I ask uh, that the spirit of the living God uh, will completely burn, uh, will completely annihilate, uh, oh God, uh, sacrifices and altar alike in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh Father, wherever they've been bound in the spirit realm, uh, oh Father, all kinds of spirit relationship, all kind of spirit bondage. Uh, I'm asking that the covenant, uh, the new covenant uh, that was made with the blood of Jesus on Calvary's cross, uh, oh God, that you would break the old covenant that they have made uh, whether willfully or not in the name of Jesus uh, I'm asking that you will deliver them oh God uh, I'm asking that you will go into the enemy's camp uh, and you will bring them out in the mighty name of Jesus uh, oh father have mercy oh God uh, oh Lord God we know oh God uh, that many of the situations we're in uh, we have brought it upon ourselves uh, oh God so no excuses uh, we're guilty but we cry have mercy we're guilty but we cry have mercy oh father the bible lets us know that oh god when the death angel was supposed to pass through egypt land the bible says that those egyptians that feared the lord when they came in under the covering of the israelites they were spared if you're out there and you're listening to me and you know that you're in good standing with god and you know that you're in the covenanted relationship with god but you have loved ones that are not pull them under your mantle Pull them under your house. Pull them under. Pull them under. In the name of Jesus. Cover them under the blood of Jesus. A heathen people did. They ran into the house of the Israelites. And the Bible says. Because the blood of Jesus was on the mantle. Was on the doorpost of the houses of the Israelites. When the death angel came. He didn't care who was in the house. He saw the blood. He saw the blood. Apply the blood apply the blood to your loved ones who are not yet saved to your loved ones who are living in sin oh god is not a respect of a person he's a god of principle apply the blood intercede on their behalf in the name of jesus oh father we thank you we bless you and we praise you we worship you and we magnify your name we say thank you, Lord God, for what you've done this afternoon. We cover these prayers, O oh God, and the blessings released under the blood of Jesus. Who can take anything from under the blood? Father, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit will continue. If it has to give these people sleepless nights, that they will turn. They will turn from their sins. They will turn from the ways of death. They will turn from the ways of destruction. And they will bow their knees to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Do it, Holy Spirit. Sleepless nights. Let them have no rest until they bow to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty precious name, I pray. If you have listened to this message 
and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you must do it now. If you once were in the fold and you walked away, you've got to return now, today. And so all you need to say with your mouth, but greater than saying it with your mouth, you must believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is, is the Son of God, and that is death on Calvary's cross, paid for your sin debt in full once and for all. No other sacrifices are necessary. Say after me, Dear Jesus, Dear Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner and that I need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and paid my sin debt in full. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I turn from my sins and I turn to Jesus. I choose Jesus Christ, not only as Savior, but as Lord. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to come into my heart and make your abode. Teach me, Holy Spirit. Empower me to become the person you have designed me to be. Help me and live the Christian life through me. Without you, I am incapable of living the Christian life. Take absolute control of my life. Be my Lord. I thank you. In Jesus' mighty precious name I pray. Amen. If you have just said those words and you believe in your heart, I welcome you, my sister. I welcome you, my brother. I welcome you to the family of Jesus Christ. My caution to you is, or my instructions to you are, find yourself a Bible-believing church. Get into the Word of God and get the Word of God into you. The decision that you've just made have made you an enemy of Satan and an enemy of the world. You have now become a soldier and the Lord will fight for you. But you must also learn the ways of the Lord and learn how the devil operates. Until we meet next week, Friday, same place, same time. May the peace, the presence, the power, the purpose the promises of God rest and abide with you always is my prayer in Jesus' name. Beloved, I love you. Go forth and thrive. You remain in control and in the middle of the war. It doesn't matter what war you're in or what storm you're in. God is in control, even if you're caught in the eye of the storm. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet, between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family, I can feel the rain reminding me. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control.